Hello, and welcome to the second segment of the lecture series on science and faith for Practical Apologetics 334a. This time, we will be considering how the teleological argument presents the case for a creator and the scientific evidence that supports this line of reasoning. First, we must begin with the philosophical side of this argument in order to use it properly and understand its characteristics. Thus, we will cover the three focal facets of the teleological syllogism, the possibilities of necessity, chance, and the multiverse objection. The idea that I want to propose is that design denotes a designer. We see patterns of design in everything that surrounds us, from the structure of a building to the codes that allow a computer to function properly. Each of these systems is not misattributed as natural. Rather, we know that there is an intellectual mind behind the coding and the construction. These are people who understand exactly how their own works are oriented. The coder has knowledge of the language of computers and can build the structures that have become fairly important in our electronics today. Similarly, the architect knows the mathematical calculations and materials to form the structures that build our working, living, and amusement locations. One does not exist without the other. Design must have a source. While we see design in man-made items, it is not the only presence. Nature has structured patterns as well. Everywhere we look, there are complex sequences that make up the universe. This is evident in the rings in a tree or the different classifications of animals. The entire active portion of science is to study repetition of a particular process until comprehension is achieved. Without distinct arrangements in nature, nothing would be repeatable and scientific study would be impossible. But it's not just patterns in the world. It is designs that have specific and structural order. Evidently, nature is accepted as composites of ordered systems. In order to reach a conclusion about the creation and the designer, we need to consider the validity of our earlier statements. Is it true that when something has a design, that is because there is someone who organized it so? What about nature? Is it made up of patterns that serve structural purposes? For both, the answer is yes. Humanity is excellent at recognizing detailed schemes, and nature far outpaces human capability of arrangement. Since we have found that design requires a designer, the universe is full and the universe is full of ordered patterns, we can conclude that all of creation has a designer. Yet, not everyone agrees with that conclusion. Many believe that it would not matter because the universe is necessarily in the state of perfect order, that there is no other possibility aside from the exact balance and detail and organization that causes everything to function how it does. One form of this belief is the theology of everything, which supposes that through physics, we can form a master calculation of that encompasses the entirety of each constant and function while eliminating all other possibilities. The struggle that is faced with the theory is that there is no scientific background and it lacks empirical evidence. Not only that, but there is also no reason for the universe to necessarily have per life permitting attributes. It is much more reasonable and likely for the universe to prohibit life. Others have decided that instead of necessity, it would make more sense if it happened all by chance. But chance is an interesting idea because it is calculable to a certain degree. 
especially considering natural forces and alternative outcomes to reality. For instance, the life-permitting range is so minutely calculated that one infinitesimally small change can make it possible for life to not exist at all. Taking into perspective just the cosmological constant, which if changed in one part in 10 to the 120th power, it would the universe would expand either too rapidly or too slowly. Now, add in all the other precisely set forces which sustain our universe, and the chances of everything working out perfectly is astronomically absurd. In fact, you would have far higher chances of a tornado going through a junkyard and building a Boeing 747 airplane than our universe accidentally permitting life. Abandoning chance alone and coming to a more metaphysical side of the theory, we find the universe machine. Multiverse machine. This is the idea that there is some form of machine that spits out random universes with different parameters and eventually one will have to have the perfect detail to function properly. In several ways, this argument is unsubstantial. Most vocally is how it has identical shortcomings as the problem that it seeks to overcome. While solving the source of the finely tuned universe, it neglects the necessity of a source for the machine. Another flaw is that in order to produce mass universes, the machine would require an extensive amount of fine tuning as well. A third thing that is overlooked is where the chemicals, atoms, protons, and so on came from to make up the different universes because matter cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes form. And machines do not create things in and of themselves. They just change the form of one object to another. Now that we have addressed the philosophical ideas behind the argument, we can review the scientific section of the argument. Each of the sections that we will cover are microscopic, natural, and galactic evidence, as well as the functional forces of the universe that support teleological reasoning for a creator. I want to start out at the smallest and most basic form of evidence that fits into the microscopic scale. One of the most important scientific units, DNA, holds important functions in the world which we live in because it's the source of life. Within the cell's nucleus, we find 23 chromosome pairs, which are immeasurably compact coils of helical DNA strands. Then there is the code comprised of four nucleotide chemical bases, which form unique genetic codes for each individual, and is subsequently transcribed into mRNA, that is, translated into polypeptides, which build up the cell. Our genetic codes are extremely unique. Not a single person will have the same code as another, because though they have the same four chemicals, there are 1,500,000,000 nucleotide pairs that in a single DNA strand that can be organized into hundreds of millions of unique codes. More complex and purposeful than any computer code in existence, it would be unreasonable to complain that this incredible code to life is a chance occurrence and not the amazing work of a creator. Once more, we will peek through the microscope, but with evidence in nature to consider. Here we can view plant cells and crystal formations in rocks. The cell of a plant is incredibly complex. While having a similar properties to animal cells, they have several unique attributes, such as the cell wall, which allows plants to retain water, and chloroplasts, which transfer sunshine and nutrients into sugar, which helps them to grow strong. Each kind of tree 
is unique, but each one has the same structure, and yet they can be recognized by the pattern of its kind. When looking at rock formation and the structure of the beautiful crystals, the atoms and molecules always take intricate formations that allow for hardness, reflectiveness, and different levels of transparency, as there are many different per precious and semi-precious stones, it is fascinating to see that each one has its own molecule pattern that is present within every stone of its type. Formation of rocks is also specific, where the amount of heat, pressure, and location has a great influence upon the type and qualities of each plant. Oh, I'm sorry, each rock. Plant life and crystal stones are some of the most beautiful things in nature, whether held in hand or under the microscope. Going from the ins and outs of nature to the entire expanse of galaxies, we see consistency in patterns of design regarding planetary motion, as well as the different types of galaxies. There is beautiful things and order across the entire universe. Among our solar system, there are amazing oval-shaped paths on which planets rotate around the sun. Some have moons that rotate around an individual planet, and they are each balanced by their gravitational forces. The Earth specifically is placed at the perfect orbit in order to have the necessary heat from the sun, but not enough to evaporate all water. Its moon has the exact gravitational orbit to refrain from colliding with the Earth, yet still causes tides to care for oceans and deflects many projectiles from space. Looking on an even larger scale, we find that there are three different structures of galaxies and that the spiral galaxy is optimal for life due to the safe zones that are between the spiral arms. With continual formation of new stars and the explosion of supernovas taking place within the arms, those locations can be quite dangerous. The center of the spiral contains a black hole, which would be equally as harsh as it emits X-rays, gamma rays, and harmful radiation. Other galaxies have none of the necessary qualities to be protective, and any other placement in the solar system would cause life to fail. So there must have been something that created this magnificent design. To touch on the foundational principles by which each of the prior pieces of evidence is upheld, our last topic is to discuss the functional forces of the universe. While there are many, we will only be covering the gravitational force, the speed of light, and the Earth's atmosphere. In the universe, the gravitational constant is precise to one part in 10 to the 60th power which means that if there is a single shift higher or lower in the gravitational force of the universe, it would ex either expand too widely or collapse in on itself, both of which would make life impossible. With the speed of light, it travels approximately 186,000 miles per second. If light speed were any slower and the expansion rate of the universe remained steadfast, we would not have warmth, plant growth, or the ability to see things because light would not reach the earth before the expansion overcame the distance. In our atmosphere, there is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, which make up the pocket between the Earth and space. It is made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, with other gases as well, but less than 1%. This is not only the air that we breathe, which supports our respiratory systems, but also a shield along with the ozone, which protects life from the harshness of the sun and outer space. 
each of these functions and many other contribute to the brilliant balance of the universe. To conclude, we find that the teleological argument is the most reasonable explanation for order in the world and is supported by scientific evidence throughout the universe. Thank you for listening to the Science and Faith Lecture on the Teleological Argument. This is my bibliography if you would like to research more for yourselves. Blessings in Christ!